You're watching The Breakfast Club. Morning, everybody. It's DJ NV Angela Yee, Charlamagne the God. We are The Breakfast Club. We got a special guest in the building, Kenyon Martin. Kenyon Martin. What up, peoples? What's good happening, morning, my brother? Sir. Ain't nothing, man. What's good, bro? Everything good. Well, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me on, man. Big fan of the show. Thank you. Thank now, you. Now, now, let's start with the, with the big three. You, you got this weekend. Yeah. yeah. Now, the Big Three is a tournament that Ice Cube put together where it's uh, former NBA players going head-to-head -head in basketball. Why, why, why did you decide to join the Big Three? I like the concept. Mm -hmm. um, it's not getting up and down for the grind. I'm saying getting up and down the court, but um, former guys are used to playing the league. You know what I'm saying? If it was just like any Joe Small guys who played rec league or something like that, I, I would have had no interest whatsoever. Right. You know what I'm saying? It's just one of them things where I – um, he presented it to me. He said it's something that he'd been thinking about for a few years now. Um, he contacted me himself. He didn't ask nobody else to do a cube. I'm mm -hmm. speaking of cube. Contacted me himself. Just broke it down for him. I'm saying what his vision was, what he wanted to do with it. Um, told me Roger Mason was on, on board. Um, Raj played in the league. Um, was at the um, the Players Association. So he was on board with it. I thought about it for a little while. I'm like, you know, that's, that's dope. Mm -hmm. I'm saying, sign me up. You know I'm saying? So I was the first guy to sign up. Are you the first one to sign I was, up? I was the first one to sign up. So no, I just like the concept of it, man. Um, get to play at a high level because that's what it's going to be, um, guys. Because I'm going to take it serious. So mm -hmm. um, just one of them things, man. It's just an opportunity, man, for like fans. like was, All of us still have our, like, our core fans, you know what I'm saying, at, right. at heart. So guys play and then you don't see them no more. Mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? But guys still can play. Like you, know, so guys, you still play ball. Yeah, I, I still can play. That's the thing. Like at a high level. So uh, and then I don't play in rec leagues and stuff like that because I don't know how to turn it off. Gotcha. You know what I'm saying? Gotcha, gotcha. Like some guys go playing rec leagues and they just go out there and going through the motions. I can't do that. Yeah, I saw you screaming on Charles Oakley. He wasn't even yeah. he wasn't even suited up. And you <laughs> was like, "Come play me one on one." I'm like, well, "What was that about? What happened?" <laughs> no, it was a joke, man. Like oh. like it was like a simulation game. And I was talking noise to guys who he was coaching. Right. So Oak just trying to take up for his guys like he do. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? That's Oak. He tried to take up for his guys, man. Just one of them things. And this league got to be good because I'm sure it's hard to make the transition in your retired life. You've been playing ball your whole life. Now yeah. you just want me to sit around and just relax. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. Like it's tough. Like it's tough to find something to occupy your time with, especially like, like you said, you've been used to guys. Like I said, I played 15 years. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? All of a sudden you got to find something else to do with your time. But, um, I, so I, I've been fine. I'm saying being home, the wife, kids, all that. But being able to play again, and then, then being um, just be around the guys. You know, mm -hmm. so we miss that camaraderie. I'm saying the locker room talk and all that, being around your guys, because you don't get to see guys. Some like guys got their own lives. We doing our own thing. Guys got business adventures, this, that, and the third. So we don't get to spend a lot of time with each other. You know what I'm saying so you develop relationship with guys, friendships, and brotherhoods with guys. You really don't get to see these guys no more. Right. You know what I'm saying so there's just an opportunity, man, for guys to get back around each other and do uh, and do what we love doing, which is playing basketball. Who are your, your your brothers in the league? Cause you played for so many different yeah. teams. I mean, I think about you went to the finals a couple of times with mm -hmm. the Nets. You played for the Nuggets, the Knicks. Like who's who do you consider your brothers? Even played out of China. Yeah, for three months, man. Yeah, three months. And it's crazy. Um, guy like Chauncey Billups. Um, gotcha. like, um, like we didn't spend that much time on the team together. But before he came to Denver, we were close. Mm -hmm. um, and then him being there for a little while, Al Harrington, um, I look at his close friend. Um, uh, Mello, me and Mello close, and spent a lot of time um, in Denver and then in New York as well. So um, JR, my younger brother, people like that. But I. Wasn't you about you know, to beat up JR one time? Yeah, I was going to knock it out. What is that? JR put, something, put popcorn in your car or something? Yeah, he had the ball boy do it. Like, it was like, it was a. It was April Fool's joke that wasn't a joke. You know what I'm saying? Like, now what, I, car, what car was it? Range Rover. Just it was a Range Rover. He white, filled it up with popcorn. Yeah, white Yeah, white interior. Mm. White Range, white interior. Butter popcorn. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Hold on, so filled the whole car up? Like, yeah, I opened the door and it just fell out. coming out yeah. crazy. <laughs> so I did April Fool's joke on them, you know what I'm saying? You know, guys, like, you know, everybody know JR. Like, you like, partake or not, a little bit, what not, this, that, and the third, so... Guys want to get their fourth, this, that, and the third. So I had them, the trainer write the guys' names on the board. You know what I'm saying? April Fool's joke, this, that. We go out for shoot around. Everybody think they about to get their fourth test, they hype. Come back in. April Fool's, ha, ha, ha. Oh, you mean like a drug test? Yeah. You know what oh. I'm saying? <laughs> so they hype. So they say they about to get their fourth. You know what I'm saying? So guys, a little freedom. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they hype. April Fool's. Oh, okay. So we got a game that night. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so I'm so I didn't play this day. So my suit, so I take everything in my wallet, car yeah. keys, all that, my phone, I put it in my locker. So he had a ball boy go get my car key. And 
don't oh. think you should have told that story, Kenyon J. I was still playing. <laughs> like you, like, like, we all Jordan been suspended already. Ain't, I'm not telling no, but nothing. Nobody don't know about this man. Jalen Rose said. Jalen Rose said the only. He Listen. said the NFL and NBA the only places you get suspended for weed. There you go. That's crazy. Yeah. But what's the black percentage of players in that's, the league? That's exactly, that's what, exactly that's what, what he Jill, said. That's what he said. Yeah, of course, he said, man. Yep. Yeah. Man, listen, just think. Damn. Just, oh yeah, I'm not telling no story. Don't nobody know about Jr. already. Was he shook when when he, when he thought he was getting drug tested? No, it was not. Nah, everybody shook. Everybody was clean at the time. Oh, okay, oh, got you, got you, you know got saying? you. Yeah. Everybody was clean at the time. There wasn't no problems. You know what I'm saying? He, had, he hadn't been suspended yet. He didn't I, get suspended until he was with the Knicks. I read something on Hoop Hype once, and it <laughs> said when you were on the Nuggets, they called you Carmelo Anthony, J.R. Smith, and Allen Iverson the Mount Rushmore of Egos. Oh, wow. Was, was that situation difficult to deal with in the locker room? Not in the locker room. Maybe for, um, maybe for our head coach, because he had an ego problem as well. George Carr. Yeah, uh, yeah that guy. I saw you. I saw you. <laughs> that guy. I saw you. Yeah, that guy. I saw you going in on him. Uh, yeah, but no, like, like when you got an ego problem, yeah, of course. And when you're dealing with young black men, young wealthy black men, mm-hmm. yeah, of course it's gonna come across like that. When you don't know how to deal with us or translate to us, you're not trying to get to know us. Yeah. So yeah, of course it's gonna come across that like we got egos. Gotcha. You know what I'm like yeah, we we've made a name for ourselves. Of course we got mm-hmm. in order to make it in that business, you got to have some type with you. But if you would have got to know us on a personal level. And what we were about in our core and this, that, and the third, then yeah, you would have, you know I'm saying, but he never took the chance to get to know none of us. A head coach? Yeah. He, like, n- none of us, man. None really? Of, like, you, like, you're a situation, guys, maybe the coach going over to dinner or glass of wine, cigar, like, none of that. I'm saying, when I was with the Knicks, I'm saying, Woody used to invite us, let's go have a glass of wine, man. Let's go smoke a cigar. Mm-hmm. Like, that's getting to know you guys, I'm saying, having personal conversations with right. them. Right. None of that, man. I played for this man for six and a half years. Man, they never asked call. me how my kids was doing. Wow. Wow. So it was all business. Yeah, I'm fine with that. Listen, yeah. I'm going to show up and do my job. I was there to play basketball. Like, I'm cool with, but don't after the fact. You know what I'm saying? Don't. After the fact, write a book and slam Yeah, yeah you know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. So all that comes back, you know what I'm saying, mm-hmm. to while we were there. You like, walk through, walk through the locker room, don't speak to nobody. Damn. You know I'm saying? Like, you're not bigger than us. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's the ego thing. You know what I'm saying? You, you called him awful and a coward last yeah. year. Yeah, you stand is. by that? Yes. He's an awful person, man. He's a coward. Like that's who he is. Like I, I, I'm, I stand by that, and that's who George Carl is. Like I don't, I, I he know it. Mm-hmm. I tell him to his face. Like I have no, I'm not biting my tongue with him. Like I, you don't attack me, my mother, how I grew up, and like I think I turned out great. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. Said not to have a father in my house. Ain't never been locked up. <laughs> ain't never been arrested. Ain't never did. Never been no gang. Ain't right. None of that. I graduated from high school, got my college diploma. Like, I'm, I'm good. You know what I'm saying. See, that's and why I you think... can't judge a book by its cover because you look yeah. like you've done all those things. You yeah, you've been exactly. arrested. None like of that. <laughs> None, <laughs> None of the like above. That? And then he always was thuggish on the court. You yeah, know that's what, what people see. Listen, yeah, so, so, so that's a perception. You said that, yeah, see, that's say, a, yeah. I'm saying that's a perception. You yeah. know what I'm saying? So now people see on me, um, TV here and there, radio, be like, man. Speak well, yeah, like right. yeah, you know yeah, what I'm saying, yeah, like yeah, yeah, like nah, like nah, it's like just cause, like I, I ain't at home hanging on the chandelier mm-hmm. and beating right. my chest around the kids and mm-hmm. all that, you know what I'm saying, like nah, I'm, I'm a normal dude, I'm quiet, I'm mad, man, like I, I don't bother nobody, I react to situations, yeah, but nah, but like f- for that, for him to go after myself, Melo, Jr., mm-hmm. like mm-hmm. come on, man, like it's like. It's a cow move. Did he reply to you after those tweets? No. Nah, what, what can he say to me? Gotcha. And people that's around him know he was wrong for that. Mm-hmm. I've had conversations with people that's been known him way before he came to Denver. Right. And wrong for that. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely. Like, ask GP. GP played for him. Like, had these conversations, man. Like, it's the same thing. Now, like, the league now, you know, needs more players like you. And it feels like the league softened up. Like, the Cavaliers could have used you. <laughs> To throw some people around, you know what I mean? Like it, it seems and what, like get it kicked is. out the game for flagrant fouls. Yeah, and nah, but it's, ain't nothing <laughs> wrong with that there now and again. Like it's it is, man. It's that's the way the league wanted. I, I understand it to a certain degree. Wow. To a, to a certain degree, it's off. But you still have to play basketball. You still have to have some type of competitiveness to you. You still have to show that you care when you're out there. Like just like me and Chance Bibbs was talking during the finals. I'm like, yo. Steph ain't hit the ground enough. He like yeah. uh, he said enough. He said he ain't hit the ground at all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I ain't saying take him out. Yeah. I ain't hurt him or nothing. But make him know like 
Basketball, it's a contact sport, man. Yeah, yeah especially when you go down to the basket. Yeah, yeah, like it's a contact lane. sport, man. Like, was it game one? KD went down where he had two monster dunk, like just down the lane. Yep. Nobody in the vicinity of him. Yep. Guys coming down, guys like they, so they're so afraid of what the league going to call or do. Yeah, that, oh, oh well, post, man. Yeah. My son yeah. say that all the time. Getting dunked on, getting dunked on. Dunk, being dunked on ain't a bad thing. The man you trying. You tried to block a shot. Mm-hmm. You, you was engaged. You know what I'm saying? So, but it's just, that's the way the league likes it, man. But it's, for hardcore basketball fans that love the game of basketball, it's bad basketball, man. Like, it's just, it's, it, it, like, it's tough to watch. Like, there's certain teams, like, I refuse to watch, man. Because I'm not, like, I can find something better to do with my time than watch them. Like, like who? what teams? Well, Sacramento, um, for uh, Philly for a long time. Now, they're getting better now. They're drafting players. you been Boston for a long time. They're getting better. But now, it's just, like, teams right now, like, Denver, I won't watch. Sacramento, I won't watch. I won't watch New Orleans play. Like, I just, Even with Anthony Davis no, and Boogie Cutters? This is just numbers, man. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. Bad yeah. basketball, man. Yeah. Like 50 and 29, and y'all lose. Like, you got 50 points and 30 rebounds, and y'all lose. Who cares? Right. That's, That's why, my thing. Like I'm not, I'm I, like I'm not with the losing part of it. And 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 they only seem to play one side of the ball. That's why I hate it when uh, Kevin Durant said Kyrie Irving was better than Allen Iverson. Oh yeah, I, like I, Allen I, played both sides of the ball. Allen. Let the league steal three times. I woke up out of my sleep to that. <laughs> I hadn't even brushed my teeth. I saw that. I'm like, hold on, man. Like, I normally don't get involved with what people say, who better than who, this, that, and the third, but I had to speak up on that. Like, it was right after the fire. Like, come on, KD, man. Like, congratulations, bro. But don't get delusional, man. <laughs> listen, yeah, yeah, yeah. Chuck, listen, man. Like, I was pound for pound, man. Yeah, Baddest one, the one out there, man. The best. Yeah, you know, you one can't out throw there, man. people around in your league, man. You know, these guys are oh, you can. now. You can't. Oh, you can. Oh my goodness! Right, listen, see you on Sunday. Oh my! <laughs> <laughs> so I, I, Iverson crosses the guy over and goes up for a layup. I'm gonna lay Chuck out. Oh my goodness! <laughs> and, it's my guy. He gonna get up. He gonna get up. Goodness gracious! Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's man. Listen, this is grown man basketball. Mm-hmm. Like it's same rules, fouls, and all that still apply. Mm-hmm. But they letting us play a little more. You can hand check. You can play a little, little more physical. They encouraging. They encouraging. The, I'm saying us to chit chat back and forth. I'm saying, but keep it clean. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, because it's on TV, it's on Fox. You know what I'm saying, so we got to keep it clean for the TV. But you know what I'm saying, they're encouraging it. Mm. So why, they're encouraging it. Why do you think AI was one of the best? You played with him up close and personal. <laughs> Just pure will, man. Mm-hmm. His size, six foot, man, 160 pounds, soaking wet, mm-hmm. and single handedly, man, carried teams year in year out. And not just like they winning fifty plus games year in year out, and and you look at his demeanor and how he is and just just good dude all around. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Not just like basketball, but a good dude and translate that to just on the court. He relentless. Like I, like the little time we spent in Denver together, like I love being on the team with him. Why you think that Denver team never worked out? Because that seemed like a team that should have went. Way farther than I think you made it to the Western Conference Finals once. And now with that team, with Chauncey as the point guard. Chauncey as the point. Okay. Um, leadership, man. Like uh, we can, like we there, we talented. But when you, like you said, you only coaching one side of the ball, and everybody not buying into what you're trying to do. Mm-hmm. You know, and we, mm-hmm. and guys not, and when, when you look at a the, the head coach in a certain light, and we not believing in what he's preaching, and management not. Not not making any decisions. Gotcha. You know what I'm saying like you got to look at like what's going on. Like it's just not the coach. Like I mean, I had this conversation there. Like it ain't just the coach. Mm-hmm. It starts up top. It starts with ownership, mm-hmm. presidents, GMs. Then it gets to the coach. You know what I'm saying so those people have to be held accountable before you can hold the coach accountable. So it's just management, man. We just didn't like we had good pieces. We were not a team. Right. Got you. So what do you think about these quote unquote super teams in the league now? What you got to do to be competitive? So you you cool with it? Because it just seems I, like we said. Like we, I said, I, like I criticize. Listen, I, I criticize KD like no other person could. You know what I'm saying? I criticize him for going there. Like he could have left Oklahoma City with any other team, and I would have been like, all right, cool. But he went to that team, this, that, and the third. But he went out there and he 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 led them. He didn't come in there trying to fit in. He went out there like I'm the alpha dog in the room, and we we go as I go, basically. You know what I'm saying? So I'm like, I backed off of him. I congratulate him this, that, and the third. But in, in order to be competitive, man, like that's what you have to do now. So you now know, you got to open the checkbook. Then. He stay there. He, he got to get a player. He will. 
It's you cra- will. It's, you know what I'm cr- it's crazy you say that because you already said certain teams you're not watching. That's yeah. how I feel about a bunch of teams. Yeah, they, they, if everybody start playing on one or two teams, it's like no, no. But it's just there's enough players to go around. Like there's like you just gotta be willing to pay guys mm-hmm. and not worry about the luxury tax. Like you can get these guys. There's gonna be bad teams every year. Like some team that made the playoffs last year not gonna make it this year. It's gonna be a couple teams. And by some teams that wasn't in the playoffs, they're gonna make the playoffs. That's just the nature of it. It's just the ebbs and flows of the business in the league. Teams get better, teams get worse. Some teams, like San Antonio, because their management has stayed the same, their head coach has stayed the same, mm-hmm. you see the longevity and the success. Other teams have don't have that. You know what I'm saying? They change coach every two, three years, change GM every two, three years. Mm-hmm. You ain't in the playoffs. Right. None of them years. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So it's just one of them situations where if you're willing to open your checkbook and put a team together and you got right the, the right people picking this talent, drafting these players, then yeah, you can do it. But it's like the the, the players you draft, like they go to the D League and you never hear about them. Like it's just it's, it's a lot of situations that could be better to make mm-hmm. these teams better. But you got to be willing to have these people in place that know what they're looking at. I'm just taking like the Knicks here, for instance, like Phil Jackson in the position picking these players. He ain't who. Pick one guy in three years. Chris Stapps. That's one guy. Yeah, 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 Let's yeah, get yeah, one yeah, guy. Yeah. Oh, he's, okay, yeah. F- free agencies brought in. Like, come on, man. Yeah, Phil's clueless at this point. Now yeah, he's like, trade, like, like so, so the thing that makes you a good coach do, do, it doesn't translate into being a good GM and a good player. It might not be a good coach and all that. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? So, it's like, is it, so these people that's picking the talent need to be held accountable. Like, these teams can be better, but it's all on ownership to open their checkbook. Now, why why didn't you ever marry Trina, man? <laughs> Trina comes up here often. Yeah, yeah, she yeah, she was she was a little she, hurt by it. Why, 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 why you never yeah. married Trina? Just wasn't the right time, brother. I wouldn't marry. Her. Yeah, I, yeah, I was younger, of course. Yeah, um, Boeing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Pretty, pretty <laughs> much, uh, <laughs> pretty much at the time. Um, but now, nah, yeah, now nah, I, I wasn't in the marrying mind state at the time. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? I was still. Still fairly young. I had just turned. I was in early thirties. Uh, still young, man. I I had been married before, and I wasn't ready to jump back into that. And um, no, nah, I, I just wasn't ready, bro. Then you have matching tattoos, the matching lip yeah, tattoos. No, nah, no, nah, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. She kissed the paper, but yeah, it was a lot of story to that, and I don't need to go into it. That's you know a good. Saying? That was a good one. I mean, like, Trina is the one. That hood dudes always historically have loved. Oh yeah, nah, yeah. Trust me, all my partners that have been locked up and stuff from the crib, like, yeah. listen, bro. You hey, man, hey, high fives around the room. Right, you know right, what I'm right. saying? Nah, it's one of them thing. Nah, it, it, like one of my close friends, like, damn, now I gotta get her out of my magazines. <laughs> <laughs> like, you got, you got a crown over it. You got the tattoo covered up, right? Yeah, man, hey, I had you to. You you can't, you know like, I, just, I just got tired of the questions. Oh, you know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, it ain't yeah, about yeah. The, like. I just got tired of. Everywhere I go, let me, like grown men, like grab my, let me, nigga, if you man, if you don't get your hands <laughs> off me, man, listen, man, like you don't know what I, I mean, I'll slap fire from you, man, don't be touching me, man. First of all, like, how, how tall are these men that they can just touch your neck like that? Like, like, that's, <laughs> like they just really like, like, let me see, like, you got to, listen, man, touch me again, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's going to be a problem here, man. My It'll goodness, real problem. Do you man. ever think about it? You still like? Nah, it? I'm a married man, brother. Oh my bad, damn. We good. No, nah, my fault. You good, bro? I'm a married man, my brother. Fault. No, I do not. He just threw that one out there. <laughs> he said, "Hell no, I don't no. want that problem." Never, never. Hey, nah, man. I'm a married man. Nah, nah. That's yeah. And then I had to get that covered up too. You know what I'm saying? My lady, I don't got you resemblance of that. You know what I'm saying? So nah, just out of respect as well. Uh, your son plays ball, right? Yeah. He just got drafted to what? What college? Nah, he, my son's 16 years old, man. 16. Now they say he's pretty nice on the court. Yeah, he can get it in. How do you he get drafted to college? I meant, I meant he went to college. <laughs> no, nah, he's, he's 16, man. Is he busting your ass? Nah, he, nah, he can't. He don't play hard enough yet. He don't play hard enough. He, like, he's skilled. He's athletic. Mm-hmm. Uh, he got that one gene. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, uh, he get off the floor with the best of them. Um, no, he got a shot. Uh, he, the people starting to look at him. Um, his little club team, they rank second in the country. Um, right now, he at the Nike Top 100 camp. Mm-hmm. Um, so no, nah, he, he got a shot, man. Jalen mm-hmm. Rose always talks about how much of a privilege it, privilege it is to play in the NBA because it's only four hundred yeah. job openings. Does your son realize how difficult it will be to break break yeah. through? Yeah, he understands that. Yeah. but you got the answer to the test at home. Gotcha, gotcha. Like got the answer to the, like right in your living room. Like you yeah, got yeah. the like right there. Does he come to you for advice? He's starting to now. Like you know, I'm, I'm, I'm dad. Your pops play yeah. ball. You dad. I'm you know, dad. Like, I'm one one ran after the other. You know what I'm saying? Like. 
Like he made a move the other day in the game. I stood up like, thank you. you know what I'm saying like I've just been I've telling been you, you know, I've been telling me to do this. Like he stood, and the whole coaching staff just started laughing because they knew I'm like. So it's just one of them things, man. I'm dad. You know what I'm right. saying? I don't know nothing. I wasn't the number one pick. So is it a formula? I didn't play for 15 years. Yeah, 15, yeah. <laughs> is it a formula to get to the NBA? Yeah, you just got to know what to, the formula. I don't know if there was a formula because I didn't, like I said, I wasn't McDonald's All-American. It wasn't mm-hmm. a, a childhood dream of mine to play in the league. You know what I'm saying? It wasn't, I just, I always played hard. Now, how did you get in the league for kids that don't know? Because, you know, you didn't go number one. You weren't a, a McDonald's All-American. What was your process to the league? So I worked, man. I always played hard. I listen. I just played a certain way. That's how I grew up playing basketball, man. I didn't take no stuff. I, I always wore my emotions on my sleeve. And I, just, I was a hell of an athlete. So you just put some skill with that. And then you had a number one pick. You know what I'm saying? So, like, it wasn't like I went to the, um, a, uh, it was the ABCD camp out here in um, Fairleigh Dickinson. You had Kobe and Tim, all them um, guys was in there, Lester Earl, and all them dudes was there when we was younger. And I just went and I did what I had to do. I went and I just played how I know how. Mm-hmm. And that just play hard, play defense, block shots, run, jump, have a good time. And that translate. Gotcha. You know I'm saying that when I got to Cincinnati, I just, I got better every year. You know what I'm saying each year I was in Cincinnati, I got better. And then it was one of them things. So my son, I'm just telling him, listen, just, just listen, bro. Like, that's, that's all he got to do mm-hmm. is listen and apply it. And, like, I asked him one day, listen, man, what stop us from being the first father and son number one picks? Like, if you, if you listen, mm-hmm. right. like, it could happen because he, he's athletic enough. It can happen. Now, what do you think about all these kids, you know, not necessarily going, doing four years in college, yeah. just doing that one year in college and now? I'm seeing that more and more and more. Yeah, it's... It's almost a regular I'm, Yeah, now. I'm on the fence, son. Yeah, I'm, I'm on the fence somewhat, man, because if you can, like... If you can go to war and do all that stuff at 18, like they should let you go earn money. That's that's Damn my right. thing. But if you go to college, I think you should be like they should force you like this. I, 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 like I'm here now, they're like trying to make kids stay at least two years. Because if you're going, like you're not really learning anything if you're going in one year. Right. Like if you like you can't go to any other profession and go to college for one year and get hired right off top. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? And be good at what you need to do. Right. Or I'm saying to be successful. So this is one of them things. Like I feel. Like you need more than one year to learn how to, to be a pro. You know what I'm saying so. If you're going to college, that's the same thing with football. Like you can't freshman in college football. Like you, there's no way feasible that you can go out there and do that. So I think it's the same thing with basketball. Like the game is faster, the game, and and that's why you see so many bad teams. That's why you see so many guys in two years and out, physically three years and out. Like because they don't, they're not learning how to play. You don't know how to play basketball. You don't learn how to win. Like that's why, like Philly, every year they got young guys, young guys, mm-hmm. first pick, second pick, third pick because. And then they in the bottom, they winning 10 games, 11 games, because them guys young, they won and done. They don't know how to defend. They don't know how to help the team. Oh, it's, it's, it's all of that that you, um, that you have to learn that college coaches are teaching you. But they need more than 30 games to do it. Right. You know? So that's just like you take the Ben Simmons thing. Like Ben Simmons, like, listen, he knew, like, I'm on in LA. I'm down here for five months. Let's call it what it is. Like, I'm not trying to go. I'm not trying to get no degree. Like, I'm here – to get better at basketball. Mm-hmm. So then that's what he did. All right. So why force him to go to school if that's not, not what he wants to do? If he's if you physically can go do it at straight out of high school, why not let you? But if you go to school, I think you need to stay a, a few years and learn how to play basketball. How important was college uh, for your development as a man? Oh, yeah, it was huge for me. Like I was a kid. Like I was fresh out of Dallas, man, didn't know nothing, green, hadn't been nowhere. Um, but yeah, and just having a coach like Bob Huggins, like I think that that's a lot of it. Like who you who you playing for, and mm-hmm. the situation, and and he didn't, held me accountable for it, like everything I did. Cause like I, said, I didn't have no pops growing up. Mm-hmm. Like, I had no had a few uncles, but I didn't have no pops in the house. So him being there and holding me accountable for everything I did, and right from wrong, sitting down having conversations with me, what I need to do to get better, this, that, and the third. And and by the time I got to them, so I was twenty two when I got to the league. So I was physically and mentally ready. Right. Like that's why people was asking like like I heard this conversation about the rookie wall, this, that, and the third. I'm, like I was physically ready and mm-hmm. mentally ready to play when I got to the league. And that's thanks to Bob Huggins. I'm saying him being on me, work ethic and how to do it and how not to do it. So that was my thing. Like I was ready. What do you think about the ball family? 
the boys, man, I, I, I've, I've had this thing, man, where like um, I have a radio show that I do, man. I just, I refuse to talk about their pops because mm-hmm. it ain't about him. I'm saying like the boys, like like Lonzo, he got a shot. He athletic, he can play um, shot, needs some work, but he passed the hell out of the ball, so he's going to help any team because that's that's a gift. Mm-hmm. I'm saying when you can pass the ball with that vision and you're willing to get off of it, that's a gift. Um, the middle one, uh, he going to be a – Okay, college player. He was a decent. He was a good high school player. He gonna be an okay college player. Um, do I think he has a? a is he a pro? In my opinion, mm-hmm. no. Mm-hmm. Um, I could be wrong, mm-hmm. but I don't know. He's young. He's going into college. Never know. He might trans transform this, that, and the third. I mm-hmm. wish. I hope he does. I don't wish nothing bad on the kid. But right now, I don't think so. Um, and then the youngest one, he can play. Um, I've seen him play in person. Mm-hmm. Um, um, out in the LA area, that's where I live now. Um, he needs to be coached better because the coach is, I think, hand picked by the pops. Mm-hmm. So he just get to do whatever. Cherry pick score ninety two. You know what I'm saying? He <laughs> like, did cherry pick that game. Yeah, right? no, nah, yeah, that's I not like, my son. They that scored ninety two, but it's, 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 it's a, a bad ninety two. You know, it's a bad ninety two. Um, but he scored ninety two. Right, but it's a bad, but. Like he needs to be coached better. Like, he, like he's a hell of a talent. Mm-hmm. He can shoot, shoot the ball, man. Shoot it like from deep. So that's a gift. Right. But he needs to be coached better. You know what I'm saying? You're like by the time he's a senior, you got two more years to go. But like that's, that thing be like Wi-Fi. Like you ain't no ain't no reeling that in after a while. Yeah, You're like, yeah. man, what you telling me? I've been doing this this way for a long time, yeah. man. It's just one of them situations. So. Gotcha. No, nah, but I wish them kids nothing but the best. You know what I'm saying? Like they from inner city, this, that, and the third. They got a chance to change their family's life history forever. Right. I'm saying, so I wish them nothing but the best. I just hate how the media tries to say things like they should rebel against their pops and don't listen to their pops. I'm like, their pops nah. got them to this point. Yeah, like, that's their pops. Like, black men get so much flack for not being there yeah, for their yeah, kids. Yeah. Now he you got there. one that's there, yeah, really yeah. there. Yeah, yeah, They're yeah. like, nah, don't listen to him. Get away from him. Yeah, I just uh, I just think he's putting a target on them kids back that's unnecessary. I'm saying, it's, it, it's tough. It's going to be tough enough. Mm-hmm. High draft pick, a lot of expectations, this, that, and the third, and you – God's going to be going at your rack as is, night in, night out. Now your pops out here like, you better than this person, you better you better than Steph, this, that, and the Imagine when you play Golden State, man. Listen, they're going to they gonna run everything for it. Like, they're going to make yeah, sure Steph, that he's guarding Steph. You know Steph what I'm saying? Pick. Steph going to score 100. You know what I'm saying? He ain't gonna, he ain't no, no, he ain't going to cherry pick. Go cherry pick. <laughs> but listen, they're going to put him in every situation feasible. Like, they're going to run every pick and roll to make him yeah. switch, make him guard him. Pop's going to be there, and he likes it. I'd be over there looking at Pop's like, oh, he better than me, huh? Looking at him, shooting that thing. Like, it's, I'm just one of them situations, man, where it's just it's unnecessary attention. I, I get it. Mm-hmm. I get it to a certain degree, but it's like let let their play be what speaks the highest, you know what I'm saying, and, and the loudest. Now, is like, LeBron – Better than Michael Jordan. Why no. do you keep asking people this question? No. no. Because there's a lot of people say <laughs> no. that conversation. No, they don't anymore. No. Now, why, why don't you no. think so? Six for six. I'm with you. Six for six in the finals. <laughs> I don't think LeBron better than Magic. I don't think LeBron better than Kobe. Numbers, personally. Nah, it's just, if you look at the numbers, mm-hmm. if you like people solely look at the numbers. The numbers you will say, yeah, he, he, all right, he top, yeah, he's gonna be. But guys like you, five time in the final, like you've been there, you got five L's in the finals, man. Like, like people don't talk about like Jerry West, like what, like nine, like eight, like it's like like you up there with Jerry West, yeah, and he you know the logo, saying? yeah, he the logo. I'm saying LeBron like, I might be the logo one day. <laughs> like, nah, it's just when like for me, it it boils down to mentality. Mm-hmm. Like LeBron's a hell of a talent. Can't take nothing. Like, he makes everybody around him better. We know that. But it's just like... That's like, kind of debatable, too, though. I see what you're saying. Well, whatever, yeah, yeah. I, I get you. Well, well, yeah, I get back to that. But, yeah, no, it, like, for me, it comes down to mentality. Mm-hmm. And I think the closest thing to Michael Jordan, in my opinion, is Kobe Bryant. Yep. Mm-hmm. Because of the mentality. Like, by any means necessary. That will to win. Like, they ain't taking 13 shots in the finals game. They not they going out listen blazing, get on listen. I'm gonna shoot yeah. like they just not gonna do it, man. Mm-hmm. I ain't never see Kobe or Mike look hopeless. Yeah, like, like sometimes yeah. you look at LeBron, you're like they gonna lose. Yeah, like it's just like that demeanor at times. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, and I've never seen that out of Mike or Kobe. You know what I'm saying? It's just like I, I had this conversation with like my son, his friends, other people about like when LeBron go to the basket, biggest strongest he is. 
if there's a center up under there, LeBron won't try to dunk on him. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Saying? Step around like he ain't going up through your chest. Right. Like hold this. You know what I'm saying? That's a mentality, man. And that says a lot like for somebody like me. I I look at that. Like look what like my son Dwight was probably the best shot block in the league at the time. Do you see what Kobe did to him? Like hold, hold this. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna go up in your chest. You're a shot blocker, watch this. Nuts on your neck. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mike on anybody. You know what I'm saying? You name it. You name it. You know what I'm saying? Yep. Like, but it seems like the whole it's a mentality. Got soft now. No, the but, it's, has mentality. but it's been that way though. LeBron ain't just came into the league. Fourteen mm-hmm. years in, mm-hmm. he ain't just coming to the league. But that's been his mentality. I seen LeBron. One like, he t- jumped Tim Duncan down the paint. Yeah, he dunked on Tim, but Tim didn't jump. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying, like he doing a little more aggressive now. Like he more aggressive on guards mm-hmm. going to the bass than he is on bigs. But the other guys, it didn't matter. Right, like who you are. Like they bringing it right to you to your yeah. doorstep. Like that, like they just ain't taking thirteen shots in the finals game, man. They like, just... like when he came back to beat the Warriors down three one. That's the, that's when I saw that will to win. Yeah, that instinct. But I ain't. That's the only time I've ever seen it in them. Yeah, they, they were down, and the other guys played out of their mind, man. And yeah, they, I'm saying they did. It. It, was, it was a lot of circumstances that helped them get that, which it's neither here nor there. They did it. Right. First, I'm saying came back three one, got him a title, and got, took it to Cleveland this, that, and the third. But but Golden State a problem. Yeah. Yeah, how does how does draft night change your life, man? Like, does it? Because in my mind, I'm thinking all these, you know, young thoughts with little black dresses and heels on, just plotting, yeah. waiting on them new millionaires. How does it change? Is it does it? Is it really like that? I, that wasn't my mentality at the time, man. I like, I was I was worried about my family, man. Like, yeah, I, it was a means. Like you look at my draft picture, man. I'm crying, shaking David Stern hand. You yeah, know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. like, like I, that's the first thing from my mind. But then when you get in it. It's a little probably a little worse now, because of everything that's going on. But yeah. no, it, I'm saying it's there if you want it. Just if you go looking for it, just like anything, man. Right. If you go look for it, you can find it, and they're gonna find you if you're there. Right. So, <laughs> listen, <laughs> if you're there, they're gonna find you. So, no, nah, yeah, man. It's just one of them situations, man. Like you're young, you come into money, and I'm saying the world is your playground at that time. Yeah, you know what I'm saying so you can do pretty much whatever you want to. Just about to be smart about it. Uh, like I said I've been. I've been blessed, man, 15 years, stay out of it. Like, stay keep my nose clean for the mm-hmm. most part. Yeah, avoid the controversy, avoid the BS. So, Plus you avoided the I social media era, too. You didn't have that social media era. Either. Yeah, true, 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 true. <laughs> that is definitely true. I remember when it first started, man. That's like, I was like, oh, my God. Like, people walking up, hey, I'm, whoa. Yeah, you <laughs> <laughs> Hey, <laughs> whoa, like, where is that going? <laughs> like, there's pictures that popped up when it first started, like, just... Like individual pictures, like I would took put like pictures with people in clubs back in the day, like this, that, and the third. And them pictures would pop up on the. I'm like, hold on, man. <laughs> like, no, this is no, this is not recent. Like, look at the, how old it look. People, are you you talk to something? No, I do not. No, 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 no. Don't don't do that. Please don't give me that one. <laughs> no, that's a no. It, it's that's social media wicked, man. All right. Well. You, hold on, one thing. you think those New Jersey Nets teams that that you went to the finals with? You think they're respected? No. No, hell no. We ain't win it. Yeah. I'm saying, don't nobody remember coming second. Unless you LeBron. Yeah. And they be like, oh, yeah. he went to the finals seven Five, times yeah, in a row. Yeah. Yeah. If, you go that many, <laughs> if you go that many times and you lose, yeah, people remember who coming second. I don't think but, anybody yeah. ever respected the Nets, though. Yeah, no. Nah, it was we, in New Jersey. I don't think it just. How could you? Mm-mm. You know what I'm saying? It was a long history of losing, man. And then you got a night, decent three-year stretch. I'm saying went to the finals twice, lost to the chance them. They won it um, that year. J.K. and I made the playoffs and something. When I went to Denver after my fourth year, ain't did nothing since. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So it was it was, it was a, a a blip on a the blip. radar. Yeah, that's yeah. all it was, man. So no, I don't, I don't think it gets – it is what it is. I'm saying. I know what we did, um, but it, it, no, it wasn't nothing special, man. I, I ain't in the accolades and – Moral victories, like we did something, or not, and there were banners going up for. Nah. Yeah, <laughs> you don't you don't care about the Eastern Conference Finals? Not, trophy? not at all, bro. Like it was cool, but we didn't win it all. Yeah, yeah, man. Yeah, I'm, I'm a sore loser, bro. You ever talk to Jason Kidd still? Yeah, me and Jay Kidd cool, man. Yeah, right. yeah, nah, but I'm yeah, I'm I don't do the losing thing well. So, oh, who you got? And this big three thing, yeah, I, yeah. Let's, oh, let's, man. let's, yeah, yeah, let's have know, this conversation. Kenyon, you know, you, you know, you, you was a Nets and a Nick, but 
My guy's Bubba Chuck. Okay. That's my guy. Well, they ain't going to win it. <laughs> I can, listen, guy? I can tell It's my guy, too. Who going to win it? They not going to win it. Who, well, who I can tell you it? that shit. I can tell you that for sure. They why, not going to win it. Why are you so sure that Bubba Chuck ain't going to win Just who he got with him. I look at the surrounding players. Mm-hmm. And then Chuck a liability, man. Why he a liability? I'm going to post him up. You not gonna be playing on Chuck? What do you mean, pick a roll and then? No, whoever he guarding, my team big. But they, all right, but then if he listen, bring, if he guarding McCants, we gonna post him up. All right, but then when he, he, he guarding Deion Glover, we gonna post him up. When, when he bring you to him and he cross you and you wobbly leg, I'm sitting on and listen. Then, and then he, uh, uh, when, man, listen, go back and look at the tapes, man. I move these things, man. Okay. Hey, I move these puppies, man. I've been known <laughs> as a defender, man. Listen, I, hey, you gonna get your popcorn here. Sunday, dog? I'm I will there. too, right. and I guarantee your team will not win it. When he make you wobbly leg, I'm going to point at you. Hey, game. listen. Championship game, August 26th. I'll Vegas, be there, man. too. I don't know what's August 26th in Vegas, man. We don't know where it's going to be, though. We don't know if it's oh, going to be It's going to be at T-Mobile. Oh, hey. so they're they going to hey. move, hey. they gonna move hey. to McGregor for hey. Mayweather fight? Come off that cash, Floyd. <laughs> <laughs> hey, come off that cash, man. Go on and put that thing in this pot we playing for. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Hey. Hey, we need that. I'm saying? No, it's going to be fun, man. It's going to mm-hmm. be competitive. Like, one thing I do know, if nothing else, it's going to be competitive, man, because we had two simula- actually three simulation games already, and it got a, two of the three got like real testy. The brothers you know getting up slower. They a little old no, now. They getting up slow. They hit the actually, no, nah, it ain't no like guy. Like I'll be forty in December. Mm-hmm. Listen, man, I can go help an NBA team right now, y'all, man. Just because my age don't mean nothing, I bro. Believe that. I can still touch the top of the square. Look at Vince Carter. Listen, I can still touch the top of the square, vertical. Damn. <laughs> so yes, man. Right now, I, yes, man. Like I this heard is, this is a real. Want to come back. This trying. is a real thing. Like I picked him first for a reason. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I had the first. I picked him first. Like I picked this team to go out and compete, man, and win. Like I, I sat there and I had we did the draft and the combine. I put one through thirteen guys. I labeled them who I thought was the best players and who wasn't there. I was going to the next guy. Like, I took that thing serious, man. So I, the team I put together, <laughs> I think we got a shot. It's you, Rashad McCann, who else? Deion Glover, James White, Al Harrington. Mm. Mm. And can't nobody guard Al. Al played in the simulation game. Can't nobody guard him. He can put the ball on the floor. He can shoot it can't, in the post. And you can put me out on the floor at the same time. I'm saying most teams got one big mm. that they bigs can't score. You know what I'm saying? Like, I ain't the best three-point shooter, but I'm a mid-range and in. And I Listen, whoever you put in front of me, I can do my man. And can't nobody guard Al. We put him in the post. Can't nobody guard him. Then you put me out out there together. Then what you gonna do? All right, I can't wait for this. This, this Sunday, this Sunday? <laughs> yes, this Sunday. Man. Y'all got to watch. Baby. Ain't, ain't no other sports on. <laughs> <Every> <laughs> <day> I, <laughs> hey man, I don't do baseball. Hey man, ain't like it's at no rec center, man. It's at Barclays, yeah, man. Yeah, yeah. So let's, uh, like it's real basketball, man. Mm-hmm. That's, that's come this on Sunday. out, dog. Get your tickets right now. Pick your team. Look online to who you going for and be in the building. Bring your family. Real family business, man. It's, on, it's on Fox. That's right. We have some stuff to give away. We're going to be doing some uh, a four-point shot for some of the fans out there to win oh, some cool dope. prizes. So make sure you're there this Sunday. And I appreciate you joining us. Appreciate you having me. Kenya man. Martin. Yes, Kenya sir. Martin. It's the Breakfast Club. Good morning. 